Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. And I decided to basically upload my runs and also do a quick commentary of the GT stages. Um, I think this will be, this will, this probably won't take too long. Um, and there's probably already a lot of guides around. I was debating with myself if I should even make this video, if I should even upload it. Um, but I, I, I do think some people still want some help and I think me providing commentary because I don't think there's a lot of commentary videos of the actual strategies of how to clear the stage I think me going through the runs and providing the commentary um, will be able to help a lot with players who want to um, who want to beat this all right so this is uh, these are runs with my my um, f2p team um, basically as you can see over here this is the team that I have brought along I'll actually go into it first and um, explain the team in inside the the actual run I think it's easier this way because we can actually arrange them by by cost arrange the units by cost all right so this is GTA X1 on challenge mode as you can see with only one life um, what I have brought is I have brought a one block Vanguard a two um two two block vanguards one one block guard one aoe guard or not aoe guard range guard one healing tank one normal tank um, this healing tank can be any tank as well and two single target snipers one aoe healer one single target healer one single target caster and i brought a random friend account um friend in just in case and i didn't actually end up using this laplin i didn't have to but it was just nice to have because this is a challenge mode run. If you fail, you lose like 10 sanity. So it was just a backup, like just in case something goes wrong. I, I brought a brought a friend along. So the first move is very simple. You put a guard facing, um, facing the left side. You put your one block vanguard facing down. You put your two block vanguard um, facing facing left. And then your one block guard facing, um, you know, facing left again as well on this block. That's just to uh, make sure you you can you know catch the leaks that are going through. And then I put my range guard here to basically help DPS over here. the The thing that makes this stage hard is they made the cost of all your range units go up. So having a range guard definitely does help. And in this case, I have Frostleave. If you have Lapland and Silver Ash, it would um, help a lot. So over here, um, this is kind of like one little detail that you have to watch out for. There's a big pack of dogs that are coming in. And um, I was debating if I should catch them here, but I thought it, was, it would be better if I used my healing tank to um, catch them over here. And now because this healing tank can heal herself, she doesn't need healing from this healer. So she'll be able to take care of these two by herself. And I think if you have like a strong um, two block guard, you could also put it here as well. So if you have like, or there's a lot of strong two block guards in this game. Lapland, Silver Ash, you know, all those are all pretty good. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, I retreated my Vigna so I could put down this uh, Meteor facing down just to help DPS a bit. And then my Courier was about to die, so I retreated him. And I was just kind of debating, all right, should I put down my Haze? And in the end, I actually did not need my Haze at all. This is the final setup for, um, for this stage. And once you have this setup, um, you basically already beat the stage. So you can see, as you can see, um, we killed everything. My Meteor ended up dying. I put Haze down to you know help DPL, DPS this last mob, but it was not needed. So that's that's the um, that's the first first stage, GTHX one, and we're gonna take a look at GTHX two. Um, this is also a recording of my run as well. We're gonna go in before I start explaining the stage. Now in this stage, the thing that kind of makes it tricky is you want to have enough magic DPS. And there's two ways to achieve this. One is you can have um, an extra, like like two AOE, two AOE casters, or you can have two single target casters. And I think most people would not raise two single target casters. So instead, I borrowed an Amiya from um, from a friend to to do this because I only have Haze on this account. 
So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, the thing that makes this stage hard, the, the kind of the challenge of this stage is they made it so the enemy attack very fast, meaning they do, meaning they do a lot of damage. They if they get into like courier's face, he's actually gonna die. So um, I'm putting down Cruz to help DPS, and then I'm putting down Hayes. I think I, I put out a Mia first, facing up, to help um, DPS a little bit. And then I put down Haze beside of Mia. And this is like the kill zone. This is where we're going to kill the boss at the very end um, using these two casters. So I, I kind of already set, set it up here because there's already a lot of mobs running in. So I put down my two single target casters first. I'm going to have my AoE caster around here as well. This is going to be the kill zone where we um, kill the boss at the very end of the stage. So this is pretty simple. Um, I put down my... I tried to pause using this. Um, I put down my my single target um, single target guard or not single target a, a, a range guard over here and um, and healer un, under under her the order is not too important but it was just better to put down the range guard to help DPS she DPS a little bit um, as you can see over here before they got into range you know so, so if you put her down first she can do a little bit of damage before you put down your healer and it's not a big deal i don't think it matters too much and then over here i'm waiting for my cost to um, regenerate i think for this video i should probably turn off my cam i don't think i don't think it's necessary it's probably easier if i turn off my cam so you can see the whole entire screen so I'm waiting for my cost to regenerate um, so I can put down Shirayuki. I'm waiting for, I don't know why I highlighted Meteor, but I'm putting down I'm putting down Shirayuki here. I was kind of debating if I should put down Meteor or Shirayuki here, but I think it turned, it worked out better that I put down Shirayuki here. And then I had Korra facing up. I did a few practice runs before this one, so I kind of knew where the enemies um, were coming. So over here, the uh, one thing that you have to like watch out for is there's two Wraith leaders at once, and they have quite um, a bit of HP. So when they get into range of your casters, you want to pop their cooldowns to at least at least one of their cooldowns to kill one of them. And if you have any other cooldowns with like your range guard, say for example you're using Lapland or something or Silver Ash or something, this is where you want to pop it. Um, same with whoever you put behind here to to help with DPS. So I'm popping my Frost Leaves cooldown, same as my um, Shirayuki's. I actually saved these two. I don't think I needed to. I could have popped one of their cooldowns. It would have been also enough to do it. I think even over here, if you pop both their cooldowns, you'll have it up before the boss anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So here, um, another detail is I had to um, retreat my Shirayuki. And the reason I'm doing this is so I could have her ready for the boss at the very end. And I don't want a unit face facing this way because there's going to be a drone that's going to come out from here later on. So the boss is coming out and I'm bringing, I have Gravel to um, basically stall him for as long as possible. I'm just having Gravel suicide over and over to tank his, tank his hits. And um, I was debating if I should switch, switch to, to um, Jitano just now. And then Gravel's up again. I'm just stalling him as, for as long as possible with Gravel. As you can see, he's getting further and further from the mobs that are running before him with my Gravel stalling. So I'm waiting a bit. Um, I'm going to use Gravel a third time after this, this dog passes. I'm going to stall him again for another auto attack. All right, he did another auto, so he's, his, he's um, a little bit further behind as well you can see over here at 37 kills a plane flies out from the back um, this is when you um, when you have it, your second sniper over here facing up to kill this plane or this drone after it's dead uh, or after it's dead retreat and then put down your aoe guard or aoe sniper again or you could put it down actually a third caster here as well it also works um, but because Shiryuki also has a slow, I think it's it's pretty it's pretty good. So the Wraith leader is coming in. Um, this is when I retreat Cruz. He's getting into into this the kill zone range, 
So I retreat cruise, put down Gitano for the um, for the AOE for the magic damage. And this doesn't even need to be an AOE caster. It could be a, another single target um, caster as well. So over here, what I'm doing is I'm putting down gravel to uh, delay them a little bit longer. And I think a really nice detail that happened over here, um, this was actually by accident, was I caught this guy before I caught the boss. Because Gravel can only block one. So I, since I caught him, he was stuck here attacking my Gravel. And Gravel's going to die in one hit from the boss anyway. So even, um, it doesn't matter if she's not full health. So because I caught him, my units were able to um, put damage on him before the boss got into range. And then he died. And then I was able to delay the boss a little bit longer with my gravel as well. So every second he's in this kill zone is like extremely, extremely important. Over here, I'm going to retreat my um, my healer because I no longer need any healing. There's no way to tank this boss. I'm delaying him for as long as possible. I popped all my cooldowns. He's slowed, you know, he can't move. And then he dies in the kill zone. And if you need to, you can put down gravel again to uh, delay him even longer. So that's the second stage. The third stage is a little bit more tricky. So for your team for the third stage, what you want to bring, um, basically to kind of copy copy someone's team, I usually like to go into the, when they first, um, when they already start the stage. So as you can see over here, I already have my courier. So basically it's a, um, I, what I brought was a, let me go back a little bit, just like one second before. So what I brought was a one, one, um, one block vanguard, two two block vanguards, one sniper, uh, one single target sniper, two healers, one range guard, one single target um, caster, one tank, a AOE sniper. Um, this can also be a slow support, but sh since Shirayuki can slow with her skill. Um, specifically Shirayuki can slow with her skill, I brought Shirayuki instead. But if you don't have Shirayuki or you're not using Shirayuki, you want to use a slow support instead. So someone like um, or Orchid, um, Earth Spirit, you know, you can you can use those instead. Or if you're if you have like Angelina, you can use that. Um, if like the, any of the six stars, if you if you have have them, you can definitely use them. And then I brought two AoE casters, and I also brought this Amiya, um, which I didn't end up needing to use, but you know, just in case, since this was a challenge mode run, I didn't want to want to fail it, so I brought another mage just in case, but I didn't need to end up using her. So over here, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know why it's lagging so hard. And this video is like super laggy. Anyways, it doesn't really matter if it's lagging. We'll, we'll just take a look at the steps. So um, the first step is very simple. I put down my courier facing facing left. And after I have my courier facing left, um, I put down this block blocking the top side. And then after this block, I put down meteor also facing left to help um, deal with these two. And then after those two pass, I put down Vigna facing left. Um, basically, I'm putting them down just when they have enough uh, when I have enough cost, so I'm deploying them immediately on this stage. I don't know why this recording is like crazy, crazy laggy, but anyways, it doesn't really matter. So I put down um, Scavenger at the bottom, also facing left. And I think any stronger Vanguard would definitely work as well. I don't know why the recording was so... This this video is crazy, crazy laggy, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just skip around. So, um, Scavenger facing facing left. And then, after they're getting into, into range, I use Scavenger's active skill. Um, you don't really need to, because at this point, I can already deploy Gitano. And I can have Gitano also facing left to help deal with the two that are coming. So, over here, I have Gitano facing left. And then, so there's not really much to do. Um, all the enemies come in, like it, it doesn't really matter. I might need to re-record this one, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. All right, it stopped lagging now at this point. I don't know why I was lagging before, but it stopped lagging at this point. Um, 
And after you have Jitano down and there are no enemies, um, like there are currently no enemies coming, you you have a like this small window at 16 kills to retreat your courier and put down a box over here. So they all all come down the bottom. You funnel them all to the bottom. So once they're at the bottom, you put down your tank to kind of stall them longer. And now there's going to be two, basically your two AoE mages hitting them from here. And then I'm putting down my Haze to, um, to also help do some damage as well. And then, you know, when the enemies, when there's a lot of enemies, you kind of have to, um, this is dependent on your own units, but when there's a lot of enemies, you want to try to um, pop some of their cooldowns to help clear, clear out some of the enemies. And then at this point, um, I can put down my Shira Yuki facing, facing right. If you're using a slow support, this is also where you want to put your slow support. So right now I'm setting up a block to make to funnel them to come down the, the bottom. Um, so I put down a block over here. I'm waiting for my cost to regenerate. And then I'm going to put down another block. Now every, all the enemies that are coming from the top side are going to be funneled to, to the bottom. All right, now with this big guy over here, um, it's a good time to... Actually, you don't need, really need to pop it until there's a lot of enemies coming. Once there's a lot of enemies in range, um, you don't want to pop your Korra's Cor cooldown. I think Korra is one of the only tanks that can actually tank um, Big Adam. Unless you have like an E2 Hoshi, then Hoshi could probably do it as well. And I don't think Liskarm can do it. Liskarm's damage blocking is a little bit too unreliable. So they're all getting into range. I popped my Shirayuki's cooldown to um, clear them up a bit. I also popped my Lava's cooldown earlier. I think at this point, if you're using Haze or Amiya, um, you could have also popped their cooldowns there. I didn't really need to, so it's fine. Because you'll still have their cooldowns once at the last wave anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So over here, it's quite simple. I'm waiting for, so right right now, um, if you're using a slow support, it doesn't really matter. Your slow support would have started slowing this big atom already. But because I'm using Shira Yuki and I have to activate her skill to slow, um, I waited for the boss to get into range and then I activate my skill. Now the thing with, um, the thing with like, um, skill like modifiers that, that change your skills, kind of like Shira Yuki and Jitano, is the moment you pop their skills, you actually get an auto attack reset. Um, similar to if if any of you played like League of Legends, similar to like Jax's W or something like that, you get an auto attack res auto attack reset. Um, so I waited for the auto attack to go off first, and then I pop the skill for a reset, and then she attacks immediately again. It's an auto attack reset. Because um, if you if you attack while the skill is like in midair, for example, um, the skill will disappear. So I'm waiting for Adam to get into range, and this is when you pop your core, or your defensive cooldown on your tank. So my core pop her defensive cooldown. I retreated my um, sniper over here to put down my second healer to keep Cora alive. And then here I pop everything. Everybody pops all their cooldowns at this point, or their active skills at this point. I'm waiting for Akora's cooldown to go off. And then I think Gavia could have popped her cooldown here, but it doesn't really matter because once um, Korra's cooldown ends, she's just going to die in one hit. She barely, barely survived. I think she's pretty much dead here. If she's not full health, she's dead. So um, Adam attacks again. Korra is dead. So over here is another detail. What you want to do, um, if that was a little bit too fast, what you want to do is you want to, this top block over here, you want to get rid of it so because you can't block the entire way like it, does, it doesn't allow you to so you want to get rid of it and you want to put a block over here once you put a block over here the only path for Adam to get to the exit is through the top so he's gonna to start turning around and walking towards the top 
and then whenever someone has their cooldowns ready you pop it um, I'm basically making it so Adam has to walk over here and now he's gonna he dies over here but if he doesn't for you like if you don't if he didn't have enough cooldown and he didn't die over there uh, what you want to do is like over here if he, if he still has a lot of health right what you want to do is you want to wait for him to walk over here um, walk like walk over and then you put another block over here and then he's gonna st you want to remove this block and put a block over here and then he's gonna walk all the way around over here till he gets to here and once he gets to here you remove this block um, and then put another block over here and then he's gonna circle all the way back around through here um, and then at this point you could have um, you could have put down I think at that point Quora would have been ready you could have put her down tank them for that entire time again pop everybody's cooldown and he's he should be dead like there's no way he, he would have survived that so that's pretty much it for um for gtx3 and yeah that's it that's pretty much it now if you don't know how to um like copy other people's teams i think that's going to be my next video of how to like do proper team building and how to actually copy other people's teams that you see in video and replace with some of your own because i think some people kind of get confused that, like they see vanguards they're like okay I, um but there's like two different types of vanguards so they're like okay i don't know who to who to really use and then there's like four types of guards so they don't know if I, they can replace frostleaf with anybody else you know so it's it's kind of uh that's that's where it gets really confusing but besides that, that is pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to catch that next video, and I will see you then. Peace out.